Welcome to this video in the communication topic. This video is going to be looking at this dot point, which seems quite big, but it actually is pretty straightforward uh, once we get stuck into it. So it says to describe the anatomy and function of the human eye, including a whole range of different parts of the eye that we're going to look at individually in terms of their structure and their function, which basically will help us to describe the anatomy and the function. So let's have a look at what the eye looks like. So here we can see an image of the eye with 11 parts that we need to label. So part number one is the ciliary body. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through the labels really quickly, and then we'll move on and have a look at the structure and function of each of these parts. So as I said, number one is the ciliary body, which are the little muscles that hold onto the lens. Number two is the cornea, which is the clear covering on the outside of the eye. Number three is the pupil. Number four is the aqueous humor, which is the fluid found between the cornea and the lens. Number five is the iris, which is our colored part of our eye. Number six is the lens, which is one of the most important parts of our eye. The vitreous humor doesn't have a number. It's already labeled there for us, but that's all the fluid that makes up the rest of the eye. Number seven is the outer white layer of the eye that we see is called the sclera. Number eight is a really thin layer that falls between the sclera and the next layer or the inner layer of the eye, which is called the choroid layer. Number nine is the optic nerve, which connects our eye to our brain. Number 10 is the blind spot, which is located on our retina where the optic nerve meets the uh, inside of our eyeball. And lastly, the retina, which is again, another really important part of our eye. So let's have a look at each of these structures. If you're a bit squeamish, I apologize, but you've got to deal with it because we'll be doing a dissection coming up where we actually do this with our own bullseye. So the sclera is the white part of our eyeball, which, you know, when your eyes are bloodshot, that's where you can see all those little blood vessels appearing. So it is a tough white outer layer of the eye made of connective tissue. So it's quite strong. So obviously our eyeball needs to be uh, quite tough to deal with the pressure that's on the inside from the fluid that's in it and obviously needs to be able to be uh, not easily penetrated. And you'll see when we do our eye dissection just how hard it is to physically cut through the sclera of the bull's eyeball. So the function of the sclera is to protect the inner parts of the eye, help the eyeball to keep its shape, and it's also the attachment site for the external muscles that help us to move our eye around so we can see where we're going. So that brings us to our muscles, these lovely pink thick tissues. And humans, we have six muscle groups that are attaching to our sclera that helps us to move our eyes in a whole range of different directions. And also, if you're talented enough, move them in different directions at the same time. So the function obviously helps us to move the eyes in or directions, which I probably didn't need to just repeat. So the cornea, the cornea is the tough surface that covers the very front of our eye. It contains no blood vessels and is completely transparent. So it needs to be transparent so that the light is able to enter our eye. So its main function is to protect the eye and it is the first point of refraction for light entering the eye due to its curvature. So we know that fraction is the bending of light so we'll be having a look at refraction in a lot more detail. So we just need to know at this point that uh, the cornea is the first point of refraction in the eyeball. Next, we have the choroid layer, which is a layer of blood vessels in between the retina and the sclera. This is found at the very back of the eye and it appears to look black. Towards the front, it forms a ciliary body, our lens and our iris. So the choroid sort of covers the whole part of our eye, but in different parts, it's got diff slightly different forms. Its job is to provide nutrients to the back of the eye, and the black part helps to reduce the scattering of light. Okay, so as we've looked at in terms of color, if an object is black, it absorbs light, so the choroid helps us to absorb light, so it's not bouncing off on the inside of our eye and making our vision all blurred. Oh, sorry. Next, we have the ciliary body. So these are small fibers that form a ring around our eye and attach to the lens by suspensory ligaments. So this image isn't actually of the ciliary body. They are quite hard to see because they are quite small. Okay, but we'll be looking at them 
later in the topic when we look at accommodation and how the lens is able to change its shape in order to help us focus on objects that are near and far away. The, fo the function of the ciliary body is to produce aqueous humor, which we'll have a look at in a second. And as I said, it controls the shape of the lens by contracting and relaxing the muscles that make them up. The aqueous humor is our first fluid that's found in our eyeball. It's a transparent fluid with a watery consistency. I apologize, I've written with a watery fluid with a consistency similar to blood plasma. Okay, so blood plasma is not too thick, but it's not too thin either. And it's found between the cornea and the lens. So its function is to help keep the shape of the eye and provide nourishment to the lens and the cornea, neither of which have their own blood supply. Next, we have the vitreous humor. So our eyeball has two different types of fluids that are separated by our lens. So this is a clear gelatinous goo that fills the remainder of the eye between the lens and the retina. So when we do our eye dissection, you'll be able to see the real difference between the fluid in front of the lens and behind the lens. This is much thicker. It sometimes can form clumps um, because it's more viscous. So its function is to contain the dissolved nutrients that it's able to then provide other parts of the eye with, such as the lens, also helps to refract light and also helps to maintain the shape of the eyeball. So we'll see as soon as we cut into the sclera during our eye dissection that the vitreous humor will start to escape and the whole shape of the eyeball will completely change. Next, we have the lens, which is probably one of the most important parts of our eye, as I said. Uh, it is a transparent structure made up of cells that are enclosed in a membrane called the cell, the lens capsule. So when you remove the lens from the dissected bullseye, it actually remains in that solid shape. So it's solid, clear, and convex, which means that it is thicker in the middle than the edges. So it's got that sort of football shape. Its function is to refract the light so that it lands directly on the retina. So again, bending of light gets to our retina so we create a nice clear image. The iris and the pupil, we only really need to know about the iris, but the two of these go hand in hand. So the structure of the iris is that it is the color part of our eye located behind the cornea and made up of connective tissue and smooth muscle. So its job is to control the size of the pupil. So the pupil technically isn't a structure. The pupil is technically an opening in our in the front of our eye in order to allow light in. So our iris will, op uh, will expand and contract in order to make our uh, pupil bigger or smaller depending on how much light is in the environment. Next we have the retina, which is a thin film with lots of red blood vessels running through it. It's a high, highly reflective surface that contains several layers of nerve cells. So that bit there about the red blood vessels is exactly why when you're taking photos of people straight on, you get that red eye because the light's reflecting right off those red blood vessels and giving the person an appearance of having red eyes. Several layers of nerve cells, so our rods and our cones, which again we'll be looking at a little bit later. And these are the light sensitive cells that help to detect light and then they convert that into an electrochemical signal to send it to the brain via the optic nerve. So the optic nerve is a tough bundle of nerve fibers. So that pink structure in the middle between that person's two fingers is an actual nerve. And within that nerve are lots and lots of individual nerve fibers that make up that single nerve. And its job is to carry the electrochemical messages from the retina to the brain in order for us to be able to actually make out what we're seeing. The blind spot is the point on the retina where the optic nerve leaves the eye. So there are no light sensitive cells there. So there are no um, rods or cones. So we can't actually see anything in this point. And it is not the same as the reflective, the same reflective color, sorry, as the rest of the retina. So when we do our eye dissection, we've cut our eyeball in half, you turn it inside out and you can automatically see where the blind spot is because it looks completely different to the rest of the surface that we're looking at. So this is the point where all the nerves from the retina join together and form the optic nerve and then head out the back of the eyeball to the brain. And that brings us to the end of this video. We need to look at a few other little accessory parts of the eye to help us do different things such as our tear ducts, uh, 
and some other muscles. And then we'll have a look at doing the eye dissection where you'll actually get your hands on a bullseye and be able to have a look at these structures yourself. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching.